today, Jan Louis van der Berg. I'm a keen a robotic knee surgeon. The name of the talk is uh, Robotics the Ultimate Answer. Our big problem in knee surgery is variability, personal variability of all patients. So variability needs adaptability. In variability, you have to look at specific data because that's what it's all about, specific data of individual patients. And in adaptability, we need precise resection of the variability. So robotics is the ultimate answer and satisfies both needs. So robotics as the solution, we're looking first of all at data collection and secondly we look at precise execution with the robotics. The workflow that we suggest uh, the best to be a restricted personal tibia cut first followed by femoral planning and the femoral planning then by hybridizing four methods namely one measured resection, two gap balancing, thirdly looking at limb alignment and fourthly shape matching. Our solution in action therefore collecting data. Personal restricted joint line of the tibia is uh, what we are looking at and uh, we evaluate the preoperative x-rays of the patients. Looking at this uh, patient example we have a hip knee ankle angle of 7.8 degrees Secondly, we have a MPT of 6 degrees or medial proximal tibial angle of 6 degrees and not 90 degrees. Thirdly, we have a posterior slope of 7 degrees. Now we collect the Navio information. We have our trackers in position. We have our distal ankle, medial and lateral malleolus point. We have the center of the femur. We have our hip center, which we collected, and then we morphed the or painted the femur as well as the tibia to get our 3D image. If we start with tibia planning first, we have to decide what restricted values we are willing to accept. So personally, I would accept uh, MPTA or medial proximal tibial angle of 4 degrees varus to 2 degrees of valgus. reason I say that, if we look at the normal values of many patients that were studied by uh, Professor Bellamans, he had a mean MPTA that he said of normal uh, patients between 0 and 6 degrees of varus, with the mean at 3 degrees. If we look at uh, Stephen Howell, uh, his MPTA variation and survival of 200 cases he reported on were between 8 degrees of varus and 6 degrees of valgus. Restricted kinematic alignment values acceptable if we look at hip, knee, ankle, or your coronal alignment, we are happy to vary between 3 degrees varus to 3 degrees valgus. As far as the posterior slope is concerned, I'm happy to accept 0 to 8 degrees of posterior slope. We look at the normal posterior slope values from Weinberg in normal patients without pathology. We see it's uh, 7 degrees, 7.3 plus minus 3.8, which makes it uh, about 2 degrees to 11. And in on the medial side, and lateral, a little bit less. As far as the tibia component failure is concerned we look at Nerupol who reported on kinematic alignment uh, patients and the tibias that failed were the ones with a five degree greater posterior slope than the controls. But interesting if we look at the mean was 11 degrees so they did not put it in at 90 degrees of posterior slope but actually at 11 degrees. 
So our proposed values are thus the following MPTA for between 4 and 2, hook knee ankle between 3 degrees varus and valgus and posterior slope 0 to 8. Tibia planning thus first, we've now decided what our restricted kinematic alignment values would be. And here we go over to action. We look at the tibia side first, that is the normal 90 degree cut component, tibia component at zero degree of valgus. <coughs> we toggle it through to four degrees of varus, which is acceptable. We look at our measured resection numbers. See, it was on the medial side, on the lateral side, nine millimeters, on the medial side, 1.5 millimeters. And we've actually toggled it uh, through to 10 millimeters on the lateral side and six millimeters instead of one on the medial side. Our posterior slope, we've uh, aligned it uh, with the x-rays beforehand and also line matched it. We are thus ready for our tibia cut and we perform our tibia cut recreating a restricted personal tibia joint line. This is the method just to protect your posterior cruciate ligament, the island, loosen the medial and lateral sides of the knee. You protect your PCL footprint with either K wire, mark the area with a osteotome, place the cutting guide in and perform your tibial, perform tibial resection. Next we come to our stress range of motion collection. Now, tensioning is a much debated topic in orthopedic surgery, but the idea of tensioning is to arrive at a balanced soft tissue envelope after a knee replacement with an acceptable range of anatomic variances with minimal soft tissue release performed. Considerations would then be Personal laxity, we know that uh, individuals vary greatly in laxity. We look at what is acceptable in gap balancing techniques and the article of Roth et al. 2015 and values they depict that we can accept is on the lateral side more laxity than medial side and then the different degrees of flexion at the bottom axis. So between 2 to 4, 0 to 4, 5 millim uh, millimeters of laxity on the lateral side and on the medial side between uh, 0 and uh, coming through to 2 millimeters. Next we look at bony, obvious uh, bony pathology, the morphologies and osteophytes will have an, in an influence on tensioning and thirdly, Soft tissue contractures and acquired laxities would obviously also have an effect on your considerations. Fourthly, important one is looking at the cruciate ligament influence. First question is, is the effect of posterior cruciate ligament resection predictable? And then we find that uh, in this article and out of our personal experiences as well, that there's a scatter range of results regarding the flexion gap increase and it can increase in this article they said zero to nine millimeter but it could even be more in certain cases so you have a discrepancy between extension gap and flexion gap you could have if the posterior cruciate is resected so cruciate ligament influences the flexion gap can increase if the PC ligament is resected, as we all know. And if we then think of it the other way, if it can increase, it means that the tibia is actually suspended or hangs on the PC in flexion. As a result, if you buy tension in flexion, it could, the tibia could toggle and give you an inaccurate reading. 
increased distraction force further could uh, result in uh, increasing your flexion gap as this article depicts by Jan Victor. The bottom, you see increased flexion, uh, increased tension can increase your flexion gap. Another important consideration is the, consider is the timing during the procedure. And uh, timing during the procedure is very important and uh, the accuracy of tensioning can be maximized if we control as many factors as possible that could wrongly influence or negatively influence the outcome. So therefore, before tensioning, you want to remove the osteophytes, loosen the capsule and uh, around the tibia superiorly beforehand. Then you performed your personal restricted tibia cuts, which we already have done. Next consideration is whether to do biotensioning or monotensioning. Biotensioning, as already discussed, if the posterior cruciate is kept, could toggle in flexion. And if we do monotensioning, it must always be done relative to the contralateral side, which is logical. If the contralateral side is pathological or has defects in it, it could give an inaccurate reading. So therefore, you want to do monotensioning relative to a restricted personal joint line on the other side. And this would give you the most accurate tensioning reading. Last consideration is the acceptable tension force and good article by Yesterberg, which suggested a little bit lower, but they actually tensioned all their patients with uh, 80 Newtons. Uh, many other values or other uh, researchers toggle or tension at higher values, but 80 Newtons is a good force to use. Coming back to our practical patient that we are working with at the moment, we, at this stage of the operation, we come to the tensioning sign icon and ready for tensioning. Now, hand-stressed range of motion does not reliably reflect the ligament tension because valgus varus stress uh, applied with hip inflection will be influenced by hip rotation and is therefore not constant. And to control it is difficult. Further surrounded by the soft tissue and posterior osteophytes, this is, uh, is inaccurate. So differential tensioning is the solution. We do our restricted native uh, or constitutional tibia joint line cut. We create a stable a platform and then we use a reproducible stress through the range of motion by using a tensioner, a differential tensioner. This is the tensioner that you can see in action. On the one side you have, on the left side, a rigid platform or a rigid uh, joint line uh, represented and on the right side we have a flexi blade. There is a torque wrench on the right side of the tensioner that delivers a constant force of 80 newtons on the flexi blade or the flexible blade on the right side. So next we take it through the range of motion therefore on the one side we have a joint line and on the other side a 80 Newton stress. We then remove and reconfigure the tensioner. We thus change the rigid pedal to the other side and the flexi or flexible pedal to the other side. 
we introduce it into the flexion space, take it through the tensioning procedure to get to arrive again at an 80 Newton constant uh, tension force and take the take the knee through the range of motion with a constant a constant tension from flexion through to extension this is what we arrived at the blue depicts the lateral tension and the orange depicts the medial tension we next move on to femoral planning and we plan the femoral placement by hybridizing the four methods mentioned, namely measured resection, secondly gap balancing, thirdly limb alignment and fourthly shape matching. So the medial side of the joint line is very important as this is the stable side where the knee rotates. So looking at our femoral placement, that's where we were. That's where we toggled it to and now to see at our different. So this is the femoral planning and we're now looking at the different methods we implemented. There we go. Shape matching, looking at the shape. Firstly, measured resection. We know measured resection is equal mounts resected distally and posteriorly. Those are shown on that picture. And this is what we have planned. Tibia side 10.5 millimeter and the lateral side of the femur 10 millimeter. Posterior femur 9.5 and tibia 10.5 so if we do the numbers or we see that it is balanced so measured resection we can tick the box if we look at the medial side we have planned six millimeters tibia and nine millimeters femur and posteriorly 10 millimeters femur therefore again we can tick the box Secondly, we look at gap balancing. We started off being unbalanced and now we have laxity as we depict on this, we see on the extension side laterally a medial one, one millimeter laterally 3.5, which is acceptable. And on the flexion side, we see two millimeters medial and 3.9 on the lateral side. Therefore, the, according to the gap balancing method, this knee is well balanced. We now look at limb alignment. We started off with a nine millimeter or nine degrees of varus uh, dynamically, and we ended up in our planning with two degrees of varus, which is in our acceptable range. Lastly, we look at shape matching, and we see on the posterior surface uh, of the femur on the right side, it matches well. Distal femur on the left side matches well and superiorly it matches well. And on the sagittal view, we see that that is matching well. So we've ticked all the boxes. We're ready for our femoral cutting and we start cutting the femur. There we go, robotic in action, do it. Post-operatively, we assess our post-operative gap assessment. We see that uh, it's not too tight and this is what we have achieved nine millimeter or nine degrees of varus we've started off with achieved two degrees of varus post-operatively uh, numbers are matching external rotation of the femur at zero as we expected and our tibia component four degrees varus Gap balanced at the end of the day with four millimeters on the lateral side in flexion and extension and one millimeter and two millimeters respectively extension flexion on the medial side. 
final picture of the patient and thank you.